to look now at the physiology. So we've looked now at the anatomy of the vessels. We've described different kinds of arteries. We looked at different kinds of capillaries and then the veins themselves. So we're going to talk about blood flow and blood pressure, particularly the latter, blood pressure. Blood flow, of course, is the amount of blood that is simply flowing through tissue at a given time. So it's measured in milliliters per minute, volume per time. If you look at the entire blood vascular system, the blood flow would be equal to the cardiac output. So that's the amount of discharge from the ventricles over a period of time. Blood pressure, of course, is that pressure exerted by the blood on the walls of the blood vessels through which it courses. And again, we measure pressure in millimeters of mercury. So if you're asked to give me a pressure like on the exam tomorrow, I'll just write down a number, put the number, okay, and then mm of mercury. Hg is the chemical formula for mercury. And that's how blood pressure or various pressures are normally measured, not just blood pressure but other pressures. In the metric system, we use millimeters. In the English system, you look at the barometer, they'll talk about, okay, it's 30.7 and falling or rising. That's inches of mercury. That's why it's different, okay? But we use metrics here. So again, you're doing systemic or systolic pressure, or diastolic pressure, or you're doing pulse pressure or mean arterial pressure, express your answer, and then it's millimeters of mercury, okay? Number by itself doesn't mean much. You need the metric units. Okay. Is that mm slash hg? Yeah, you just mm slash hg, or mm of hg, whatever. Everybody knows what a millimeter is? thousand of a meter, okay? What's a meter? A little bit more than a yard, about 39.2 inches, okay? Do you have a question? The mm slash hg, does that mean the mm goes with the top number and the hg goes with the both, bottom? Both, both, okay? So, so we say the blood pressure is 120 over 80? 120 what? 120 mm slash... 120, it would be the pressure to support a column of mercury 120 milliliters high. 120 milliliters of mercury. And the old thermometers used to have mercury in them. You don't see many anymore because mercury is toxic stuff, okay? So now they've gone through, they've taken out all the mercury thermometers. And now it's usually a ton of alcohol. It isn't quite as good, but it works, right? When I was a kid, we used to play with this stuff, right? <laughs> like, imagine. We you take that mercury, and you take a silver coin, like coins that were really silver, okay, they're not anymore. You'd have a dime or a dollar, you know, or a quarter. They were actually silver. And you put it in the mercury and it get really shiny, really pretty and shiny. Did you ever do it with a penny? Uh, I don't think it, it was really it. difficult and it yeah, took well, a long penny, time. Those you, times, had, you had to really work with yeah, it. Yeah, but at that time, the, the pennies were actually copper. Now they're zinc with a very little copper coating on it. Yeah. Our money is not what it used to be. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> and if you look at your dollars, you're too young to remember. They used to be silver certificates because mm -hmm. they traded for silver. Now it's the Federal Reserve note. Mm -hmm. okay, which means it's just paper, yeah. right? <laughs> then it was in the Federal Reserve, you know, which maybe, who knows? Anyway, but yeah, we used to do that, you know, so God knows I'll probably die of liver cancer. You know, so. <laughs> that stuff's absorbed through the skin. And now, of course, mercury, you know, you don't just touch the stuff, you know. But anyway, and then we also had, I'm getting a little off the track here, this will not be an exam, okay? <laughs> you could go into shoe stores, that's how old I am. And they had what was called a fluoroscope, and you would stick your feet in there, and you push a little button and you can see the bones of your feet. So what you were basically doing is you were x-raying your feet. They're not there anymore. <laughs> 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 so I probably zapped my bones as well. But anyway, all these things they didn't worry about then. You know, they didn't have the, the health hazards. Now mercury, ooh, you know, we don't mercury, especially in our thermometers even, you know. Okay. And you don't play with the mercury and stuff anymore. No, but I did it remember mercury. And just that's a silver liquid, you know. And it cleans up those coins really nicely. But anyway, okay, but express pressure as mmHg, millimeters of mercury. So that's what we use to measure pressure. In this case, blood pressure. Okay, so please use the metric units. So that take off, you know what? Because you didn't put the metric unit, right? But I want you to be aware of what we're talking about. Our number by itself doesn't mean anything. Blood 
measure, notice, is directly proportional to cardiac output, which we've already talked about, which is heart rate times stroke volume, and also total blood volume. With an increase in either the blood pressure, or I should say the cardiac output, or total blood volume, giving a corresponding increase in blood pressure. And a decrease in either, a decrease in the blood pressure. Okay, so they're directly correlated. Let's look at things that affect blood pressure. All right, first of all, resistance. Resistance, as you can see, is the opposition to the blood flow. And it's due to the friction generated by the blood rubbing against the walls of the blood vessels, the arteries. And since there's more friction or more resistance in the smaller vessels, when we talk about resistance, we're usually talking about peripheral resistance. So we're talking about the resistance in the arterioles, the capillaries, and the veins. Now there are three major sources of resistance, all of which are directly proportional to blood pressure, BP for short. One is the viscosity of the blood. Viscosity literally is resistance to flow. We often measure resistance to fluid, and probably the best example would be what? Motor oil. You have a viscosity, okay? 10 weight, 20 weight, 30 weight, or now it's usually multi-viscosity, it's maybe 520 or 1030, okay? And this is important. If you're up north in a northern winter, you don't want 30 weight oil in your engine, or you may have trouble starting it when it's 20 below zero. Not wind chill, but actual. Okay. You want lighter weight oil. Okay. Anyway, this again is internal resistance to flow. And for the most part, blood viscosity is fairly constant in a normal adult. However, with dehydration, where you're losing water, severe burns, where you're also losing water, and polycythemia, the viscosity is going to vary. Okay. In fact, with dehydration and burns where you're losing water, and polycythemia, it's going to be more viscous. The blood's going to be thicker. And severe burns, as you know, severe burns can result in death. You lose a severe part or a large part of the skin. Why? What does the skin do? It protects against foreign invaders. You can usually control that with antibiotics, but what you can't control and have a major skin loss is the loss of fluids. The skin literally weeps fluids when you lose that skin barrier. And that's often what kills when a person has a major loss of skin. They often die because of the severe dehydration. Okay. On the other hand, anemia, which can be due to two two red blood cells, or hemorrhage where you're losing blood, losing blood rather, and less blood cells. Okay, this can result in a decrease in viscosity, and that's a decrease in blood pressure. So these increase viscosity, increase blood pressure. These would decrease viscosity and decrease blood pressure. Okay, so that's aspirin? one factor. Any question? What about aspirin? What about aspirin does sleep? Aspirin can stimulate GI bleeding. Okay. Uh, and some people it affects that way. You know, they'll have mighty bleeding if you like that. Well, I mean, aspirin tends to go, so that would. Well, aspirin is an anticoagulant, yes, it will. Does it lower viscosity? It can. Well, it's already lowered the viscosity, but it's doing this for them to fall. Okay? So, no, it's not really changing the viscosity. Really? Yeah. It's basically helping to prevent blood clotting. Okay. okay. Not by viscosity, though, it's just by blocking the clotting of the aspirin. Okay. okay. But, two, prolonged use of aspirin, you can have bleeding. So, in that case, indirectly, you could be affecting blood viscosity by hemorrhage. Okay. Okay, so that way, yes, it would. Which means it would make it thin. Or less viscous. Okay. All right, total blood vessel length is another factor that affects resistance. Obviously, the longer the total blood vessel length in your body, the greater resistance of flow. So when you put on weight, and as adults, most of the weight we put on is what? Adipose. <laughs> okay. A good kid, you know, a good cushion of fat. That fat has to be supplied with blood vessels which means you're going to add miles of additional blood vessels. And I do mean miles, you know, because you've got miles and miles of blood vessels in your body. And every time you add weight, including fat, 
you're going to increase the blood vessel length. What's that going to do? It can resist, increase resistance and it can increase the blood pressure. That's why people are overweight or more likely to have problems with blood, blood pressure. pressure. They tend to be higher blood pressure. And that can be very severe. They'll say, lose weight. Okay? Help reduce that blood pressure. Okay? So again, significant weight gain can result in elevated blood pressure again due to increasing the total blood vessel length. Okay? When a person is weight is fairly stable, that's not going to be a major factor. Resistance is inversely proportional to the diameter of the blood vessel. Okay, so in other words, the smaller the blood vessel, the smaller the lumen, the greater resistance the form. As we said, most of the resistance is where? It's peripheral. It's in the small diameter blood vessels, arterioles, venules, capillaries. So if you vasoconstrict that vessel, what happens? You're going to increase the resistance to flow and you're gonna bring the blood pressure up. That's why I said vasoconstriction not only reduces blood flow, but also increases blood pressure. Vasodilation, okay, gives you a greater volume or greater lumen that reduces blood pressure. Okay, so resistance inversely proportional to the force power of the radius of the blood vessel. So you wanna do this mathematically, okay? You decrease the radius by one half. This is gonna increase the resistance to blood flow 16 times. Resistance is proportional to one over the fourth power, the radius of the fourth power, which equals one plus one half to the fourth power, which comes out to two to the fourth power, which is 16. And I'm not gonna ask you to do this on the exam. But I want you to understand it, it's common sense. The narrow that lumen, the greater resistance, the higher the blood pressure. Okay? And a normal healthy adult, blood viscosity, total blood vessel length are relatively constant. What does vary is most responsible for change in resistance, change in blood vessel diameter. In other words, vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Not something that goes on on a regular basis, according to the needs of the body. You can constrict and dilate those blood vessels. Do it very quickly by sympathetic stimulation, causing constriction, by contraction of speed muscles, blood vessel length. Prime factor, main factor contributing to peripheral resistance is not blood viscosity, it's not total blood vessel length, it is change of blood vessel diameter. In other words, vasoconstriction and vasodilation. Now, there's some other things that can resist to cause resistance to blood flow. These can be things in the vessel wall. For example, if you've got fatty plaques that can develop, fats and cholesterol, what does that do? It tends to occlude the blood vessel helps to restrict and increase the resistance and restrict blood flow, okay? But there is things like that. They can also increase resistance. But again, the major point here is, the major thing that increases resistance is blood vessel diameter. Vasoconstriction, vasodilation. The other two factors are usually fairly stable. Blood viscosity and total blood vessel diameter. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Well, we need to know Thank you. 